and welcome to a special edition of Off the Court. This week, some very special guests, including the England head coach, Jess Thilby, and England Roses players, Laura Malcolm and Leila Guskus. Let's head to the best bits from The Neville Show. With me to start off is our very own Caroline Barker and two former flatmates, the England head coach, Jess Thilby, and the Scotland head coach, Chamsin Greenway. Ladies, can't wait to chat to you. There's so much to talk about. But first, some breaking news this week. The England will resume in June. And to bring us up to speed, let's head to Sky Sports' Jenny Woods with the latest. Hi, from the other side of the world. I can't believe it's not even a year since I was with you in Liverpool. Seems like a lifetime ago. But uh, there's a saying actually down here at the moment, you know, what a year last week was. And uh, we've had a few weeks a little bit like that. Some of them in lockdown. We're, we're just emerging from the lockdown here in New Zealand. And with it brings the news that the ANZ Premiership will be able to start again. So that's coming up on June the 19th. So a little over, what, five weeks away. All the teams will be playing here in Auckland on a Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. So there'll be 10 weeks of the competition. They'll still play each other three times as they would have in the original competition, which means we'll get through it by sort of mid to late August. So wonderful news, really. Uh, during the time that uh, the country has been pretty much shut down, the players all went back to their homes, wherever in the country they might be. They've been training, obviously, on their own. But come the beginning of next week, they will be returning to their centres, getting back, training together. They'll have about, well, that five weeks or so where they can get in some match fitness. And then come the 19th of June, we will be underway and we will have some netball to watch. So yay. Uh, and I think that's probably going to be fairly warmly welcomed in your part of the world as well. So something to look forward to. And uh, I hope it won't be before your Super League is up and running as well. So stay safe. Keep well. Back to you, Di. Thank you very much, Jenny. Caroline, over to you. Just put into context exactly what this means, the ANZ Premiership returning in June. I thought you were going to ask me to talk for half an hour about Jenny's artwork behind her and, and the sweet-footed <laughs> cat that popped in, but we won't do that. The good news, if you're feeling a bit starved of netball action at the moment, you will be able to watch every game that's played on telly in New Zealand will be shown by Sky here in the UK. It's commonly thought that the league in New Zealand, league in Australia and the league here in the UK, they're the strongest leagues in the world. So it's key really on the future of netball, whether they get going and at what stage. New Zealand first off the blocks then. Australia, we expect to have an announcement at the end of this month, 31st of May. But at the moment, the players, that's the latest news that's come out of Australia. Uh, they've been very much part of the conversation and they've decided not to get back to full team training. So just individual training at the moment. Here in the Netball Super League, there was a meeting on Monday. There'll be another one on Friday. Further conversations will happen next week, but for the moment, it's on hold to at least the 31st of May. OK, so meeting, there was a meeting on Monday. There is one on Friday. Jess, as the England head coach, how much input are you having with all these meetings that are happening at the moment? Yeah, no, I've been very much part of all the discussions um, that can include from contingency meetings around Super League and collaborating very much with our clubs within England Netball. Um, we've got regular conversations with Australia and New Zealand weekly um, to make sure that we're kind of collaborating in terms of the international space. Uh, and yeah, it's, you know, we're in regular contact with our player group and the senior player group in terms of making sure we include a player voice in, in all the conversations that are happening. So recent, recent days and weeks, you know, things change quite quickly and, and our focus is very much around the return to train piece and what that might look like very much under the guidance of, of what we're receiving from government at the moment. Mm. And Tamsin, there's a, a lot of chat at the moment that the, the sport may go backwards if it's played behind closed doors and there's, there's no crowd to watch these games. Does that really matter at the moment? Is it a case of just getting the sport back when it's safe to do so? What, what's your opinion? I, I think there's two very different parts to this. The domestic game for me, a crowd is not necessarily so important. Look, let's let's be honest about the venues that most of the teams are playing in um, and the revenue they create from the, from the crowds. Uh, you're talking sort of one to two thousand people coming to a game. So although you know it won't be the best atmosphere, I think most clubs in the Super League could manage that. 
and actually look at the positive spin of that. The fact that you, um, you know, if you can't go to watch it live, where are you going to watch it? Well, you're going to watch it on TV. And actually for me at the moment, with the stadiums as they are, and not the opportunity to expand them for most clubs, the opportunity to then go, right, hang on, let's get this new audience in. Let's get this, this different crowd watching netball that when it does come back, all these people can start to go and watch the game. Um, I think it is different from an international perspective because you're talking about tens of thousands of people, bigger venues. Um, and Jess, I don't know, the, the crowd to me at the moment are not as important as actually looking at the whole aspect of the game. A few weeks ago, everybody was on lockdown. What's starting to happen now is Australia look like they're going to get back playing. New Zealand look like they're going to get back playing. I think uh, netball as a whole has got to look at that next stage because, you know, what happens if those teams start to play and start get to opportunities building up to Commonwealth Games. There's ranking points to come into this. There's players, English players that are stuck out in Australia or vice versa. I think there's a whole bigger picture that the sport needs to worry about rather than playing behind closed doors. What are your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, first and foremost, there's no lack of desire on our part to also want to see the game back. Um, I think we're obviously in quite a privileged position in the fact that we're having conversations daily and have insight and knowledge and understanding of how complex this is. Let's not forget that our sport differentiates from other professional sports that we see in the headlines like football. We don't own our own stadiums. We don't own our own arenas. Um, financially, we're not in the same um, ballpark as some of those professional sports. So I think it is a lot more complex than people maybe first think. Um, we're all absolutely wanting the sport back. We This is what we live for. Um, we love our sport. We want to see it back up and running. It can't come at the cost of anybody's health. And we talk and focus very much on the athletes, but it's also about the staff that would be required both in terms of the host venues and sites that we might be asking to facilitate a return for netball and it also can't come at too much of a risk for the sustainability of our domestic clubs um, moving forward you know when we come back out of this we want to come back out better than what we are now and as you say build on the momentum and profile that the sport's seen to see crowds filling up on the season opener this year you know is brilliant but actually I think it's really important that we might have to consider all options and if getting the the sport back means that we have to consider no crowds at the, at the start. That will very much be governed and out of our control to a certain extent. Um, and I think as a sport, we just need to make sure that netball is visible and that we continue to, to keep the game alive and continue to raise its profile in the best way we can, given the current conditions. There's two things in that, Jess. I love the fact that, that you, as part of the England setup, but the players, the coaches are talking with the league to England netball are involved in that conversation because it's not going to work, particularly when there's such a strong volunteer structure in netball, unless everyone gets involved, right? But you've worn these two hats. So you've been involved in coaching Team Bar, successful team in the Netball Super League, but now you're there with England. When Tamton talks about ranking points, you've got to be playing games. Otherwise, you could slip down in theory if other teams get playing too, which then when you get into the big tournament could really cost you. So how do you balance those, those two? Yeah, I mean, you're absolutely right. I'd like to think I've got um, empathy on both sides of the fence and I absolutely value the role that the clubs are playing in our domestic league plays. And I think just in, in terms of a compliment to the, what the clubs are doing with the athletes at the moment, it's been fantastic over the last seven or eight weeks. I think from an international point of view, my priority at the moment and working with Sarah Symington, our performance director, is to protect and preserve both the quantity and the quality of the matches that we can create um, in that international space. We might have to reimagine what that looks like, remodel and reposition where those games can be played and all very much taken on board and being respectful of, of the role that Super League plays in that. You know, I'm very mindful that both Suncorp and the ANZ may get up and running sooner. We can't control the fact that the pandemic is as clearly impacted upon those countries far less than, than what it's currently impacting on ours. So th there are elements here that are out of our control, but actually I consider myself relatively creative in terms of my thinking and I'm most probably driving some people mad with coming up with what if scenarios all over the place. But yeah, I think just a, an open mind, some lateral thinking and protect and preserve the quality and quantity of matches between now and, and the next big championships, which is obviously Birmingham and the Commonwealth Games. We've had loads of tweets already come in at Sky Netball Die. And I just want to put this to Tams in first and then maybe Jess, if we've got time. Um, Tom says, I thought ticket sales were franchise's main source of income. And that's a good point, isn't it, Tamsin? Financially, how will these clubs cope if they haven't got the ticket sales? 
I think you have to look at every single club individually and it's not the case necessarily for all the clubs. You have to remember, Jess raised the point that they don't all own their venues. Some are played through universities, some have separate deals. Um, so there is a whole bigger picture to this. Most clubs, the revenue is important. It won't be their be all and end all. A lot of actually their community outreach program is a, is a big part and the funding and sponsorship they get from other things. You know, one to 2,000 people on nine games across the season isn't paying for your club to operate through the year. Thanks, ladies. Jess, it's been brilliant to have you with us and we look forward to chatting to you more over the next few weeks and seeing you when the, when the time is right. Um, but for now, please stay with us and watch the rest of the show. But for now, we'll take a short break and we'll see you after this. Hi everyone, it's Mickey Austin here from Surrey Storm. I hope you're all doing well in the current climate. We cannot wait to be back on court sometime soon and we will see you then. Hey guys, I hope that you're all well and that you've all been staying active during lockdown. We can't wait to be back on court. So in the meantime, stay positive, stay healthy, keep connecting with each other and we will see you soon. We are very excited to have with us um, a regular face that you've seen on Sky Sports over the last couple of decades. Uh, it's England and Manchester United midfielder Paul Skoltz and his incredibly talented daughter, Manchester Thunder and England under-21 netballer Alicia Skoltz. Guys, great to have you with us. Uh, just to tell our viewers a little bit more about you, Alicia, you've risen up through the England age groups, uh, played netball under-17s, under-19s, under-21s, and you've just been called up as part of the Manchester Thunder senior squad, still playing for the under-21s. So you're doing a tremendous job on the court. You guys have been in lockdown together for the last few weeks. Uh, tell us um, how bored you are right now, what you've been up to, and how are the fitness levels? Um, yeah, yeah, well, Alyssa and um, our older brother Aaron are actually trained PT, so we've been quite busy um, over these last few weeks. We've had plenty to do. I've been like a little guinea pig for him, I suppose, trying to get me out there training. It's hard to get a day off, actually. You've had a fitness camp, haven't you, I've the whole time? I've had a fitness camp for seven or eight weeks. Which <laughs> um, I've not enjoyed that much, actually. But no, it's, it's been nice to get a day off. We've, we've done other things as well. You've been keeping your fitness up, haven't you, with, with no netball, obviously. So it's been quite difficult, but she's, she's very dedicated, professional and... I think she, when, when she goes back, she'll be certainly ready to play. You are lucky enough to be currently in the Thunder squad, who are the uh, Super League champions from last year. Um, and of course, you got to witness England winning the Commonwealth Games for gold um, a couple of years ago. Uh, is that ambitions for you, making that first team, getting into the England squad, following in your dad's footsteps, but just in a better sport? Yeah, well, um, <laughs> definitely. Um, I do. I do feel so lucky to have um, that England Commonwealth Games team um, ahead of me and my generation, just to watch them. Because um, it's just, I think it's just that sense of just believing that if it can be done, and even though we are underdogs, that it's been done before and it can be done in the future. And if we just keep working doing everything right then in the future we we will give them give them teams a run for the money and we are here to um we are there to like challenge them and not just be second place or third place but in the future we do want to go for them gold medals and prove that we are just as good as them i think it's important as well that she, she continues to develop and learn i don't think she needs to set targets at this age she's what, she's only 19, so she's, she's getting great experience at the minute. She's got Rachel Henry, who's an ex-Super League player at Berry, who's the coach and plays them every Sunday morning. Jade Clark he also plays, and you can't get a more experienced girl than Jade Clark, and she's absolutely brilliant with Lissy. Great bits of advice, not just with Lissy, with the, the rest of the team as well. And she's also training every week with the best team in England, which is Manchester, uh, Manchester <laughs> Thunder, which I'm sure Tamsin will, will be happy about but no she's getting great great experience no, no need to set targets um keep doing what she's doing keep learning and you know i'm sure the future will be bright don't worry about that tams and by the end of this call we'll have you signed up for scotland alicia don't worry she's, she's been watching some of your your footage actually and just seeing this engine that you've got proper mid quarter what have you learned from your dad how has he how has he helped you and and what what in turn, Paul, have you learned about a netball through Alicia? 
I think, if anything, what I've learned off my dad is just to stay, never like look too, never be too far ahead of yourself. He just says to me before I go to training all the time that thunder should be my main focus, and I've just got to keep going to thunder training at every single time I go, just wanting to learn and get better, and don't try not to. Obviously, obviously, it's every girl's dream to um, play for England, but. I'd, I'd never look at that now. I just think I want to make sure I'm the best I can be for Thunder. And I just want to be one of them players, like, in training, I see Caroline and just starting seven every week, doing doing a job for Thunder. I just want to be someone who can go on court every week and do my best for Thunder and be well-known at Thunder rather than look too far ahead. We're going to head now Thank to you. a Thank very you. big Manchester United fan, and uh, that is England Roses star Helen Housby. She's been spending lockdown in the Southern he Hemisphere in Australia, where she plies her trade with the New South Wales Swifts. And let's find out what she's been doing during lockdown. She spoke to Hannah Wilkes. Thank you so much for joining us. What is life like in Australia right now? What does a, a day in lockdown look like for you? Have you got a bit of a routine? Yeah, I think it's quite important to keep a routine. I think as an athlete, um, we're used to being told where to be, you know, what we're doing every day and having a structure. And it's very different not being around the team and not being around the girls every day. Um, but yeah, we're still training. and I think we're lucky to have a good club in the Swifts and they've provided us with pretty much a full home gym. So yeah, it's still, still a lot of training. Um, and yeah, just trying to keep the mind busy um, and stay as healthy as possible. Talk us through it then. What, what does a day at home training look like and how do you use all that kit? And I have to say, really envious of looking out over the water because that location looks pretty sweet. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's probably the best gym I've ever worked out in. Um, I'm thinking about charging some memberships if anybody wants to come around. Um, but yeah, we've got squat rack, um, trap bars, bikes. We've pretty much got everything that we would do from a strength and conditioning basis at our house. So yeah, usually four or five times a week we're doing uh, gym. So lifting weights, um, using the squat rack, plates, you know, bench press. We've got kind of everything that we need there. And then a couple of times a week we're doing Zoom bike sessions with the team. So everybody logs onto Zoom and everyone's got a bike at their house and we kind of have someone lead the session and and then, yeah, getting out and doing running sessions. I actually had fitness testing this morning. <laughs> so we went to uh, the netball courts, the local outdoor netball courts, and we had to run the yo-yo test, which was no fun. But, uh, yeah, we're just keeping going um, and keeping connected as a club because we do know that this is, this is going to end eventually, and I think we want to come out of it in a good place. And it would be very easy to lose a lot of fitness um, when we're doing this. But I think just having goals every day, every week, um, makes it a lot easier. It's all well and good, isn't it, keeping on top of that fitness, but speaking to some of the Super League teams and players over here, there's a worry about the sort of match sharpness and not being able to get out on court. Is there any concern about those connections on court and not being able to quite maintain them and get them all firing like you'd like to? Oh, yeah, I think that's always, that's always a worry, um, but I'm, I'm hopeful that we're going to have you know, enough time before the season starts together as a squad. And you know, if we don't, if it's maybe a bit tighter than we want then I know that the connections are already kind of in place from last year and the seasons before because you know this team has been together now for pretty much four years um, and we're building every year obviously last year was the culmination of that and, and winning the championship so I'm hopeful that their connections are still there buried somewhere and it won't be too hard to find them um, it'll be kind of a, a nice challenge I think to see how the team adapts to it and how the team can work around it um, because obviously we might not have that much notice before we get told that we're going to be playing so yeah it's a tricky one. With all these major leagues having the same issues, do you think there's a way they could work together and, and come out with a, with a positive outcome for the future of netball, perhaps something like an international calendar or just working cohesively there? I mean, yeah, that would be awesome. And I think something that netball's had over the last couple of days is momentum. And I think it's important that we don't lose that um, when you know this is all going on. And I think the teams that are being proactive um, and are putting things in place are going to come out of this the best. And you know, ultimately, like, everyone's still going to love sport. Everyone's still going to want to watch sport. And I think it's the teams that know that and are putting things in place to make it still very watchable and make it approachable and, and getting it out there and, and keeping it within the public reach, even though people are very isolated at, at the minute. So, yeah, I think netball in particular, um, we've been on quite a wave since the Com Games and the World Cup. Um, and I don't want this to kind of, you know, stop that wave from continuing. You know, obviously the next Commonwealth Games is in England. So it would kind of, yeah, that's the, the end goal to, to head towards that and to keep the interest um, up before we get to that games.
Uh, really great to hear from Helen Halsby there. We've got another special guest coming up after the break, but for now, a special message from Karen Gregg. Hi everyone, hope you're all well. I'm sure you're all missing netball as much as I am, but it's been great to see how connected the netball world has stayed during these difficult times. Stay safe and hopefully we'll be back together again soon. Welcome back to The Netball Show with me, Caroline Barker from Sky Sports and the head coach of Scotland and a seven-time Super League winner, Tamsin Greenway. Uh, ladies, we're, we're waiting for a very special guest to join us and I think she's just about managed to log in. Uh, she describes herself on Twitter as half netballer, half doctor. There she is, England defender, Leila Guskus. Leila, we're going to call you full-time super are, basically, um, <laughs> you, play for the, you certainly are. You played for the Adelaide Thunderbirds. Uh, to tell our viewers, you've come back from Australia and you're working in a hospital in Birmingham. And you, you're actually working um, with COVID-19 patients at the moment. Just tell us what, what your daily routine is like. Um, so, it, yeah, it's quite different to how it was before I left. Um, so... They've, they've got rid of, scrapped all the normal rotors and they've allocated some of the wards to, to be COVID and some of the wards aren't. So at the moment, I'm on a rotation where we work long days. So we work 8am till 9pm, four days a week. Um, and then we get four days off, which is pretty nice. Um, and we also work some long night shifts as well. So daily routine in the hospital, same as usual, ward rounds, seeing lots of patients, but um, it's been very busy. Um, and it's been it's been quite difficult, but it's it's a good energy and a good vibe around the hospital. Wow, you, you're amazing! You're doing an absolutely tremendous job. Just tell us what kind of you know mental strength you need right now, because it's a really tough time for everyone in the country, but especially if you're working in hospitals and you're on the front line. Yeah, I think um, I think the hospital's actually been quite remarkable in how everyone's come together. And I think there's a sense of unity and um, all the, the doctors, nurses, physios, everyone's really come together and there's some good support networks. There's days that are a lot harder than others, um, but I think we're, we're well equipped for it from the usual job. Um, so I think it's been tough, but I think the support and everything for me has been there and it's been it's been encouraging to be a part of. We are all full of ad admiration for what you're doing, Layla, but we sit here with opinions Thanks. that aren't always informed, right? But you're in this position, this unique mm -hmm. position. You're an athlete and you're a doctor, so you're seeing it on the front line. From what you know and from what you see, do you think sports should even be thinking about coming back at the moment? It's a really tricky one. Um, I think for me personally, I, I don't think as a country we're, we're ready yet. Um, I think that I've seen huge improvements in the admissions that we're getting into hospital. But like everyone in the country, when I flick on BBC News at 5pm um, to hear the briefing, it, it does make me nervous knowing that I don't think we're quite there compared to other countries. However, I would love to see sport and I think it would be cool to have a netball season in some capacity when things are safe to do so. But for me, safety has to be first like it is for most people. And I, I don't think right this second it looks like we're ready for that. And, and Leila, that, you know, we keep saying this, it has to be about the safety first, but putting your athlete hat, hat back on, you must be missing this loads. I think people forget oh. that netball over in this country, especially is amateur, you know, semi-pro at best, professional where you are in Australia, but you have these dual roles and you're doing an incredible job at the moment. How much are you missing that netball? Because I, I know that it, it's usually an escapism for all of you. You go to work, you do yeah. your day job, but the netball, the team getting together, the... Um, the competing that's that day to day like are you managing to do that are you too tired you've just been talking about your shifts to us off the air and it's just an incredible thing what you're doing are you, are you really really struggling without it yeah you're right I think escapism is the word I think netball for me has always been a release from work and it's great hanging out with people and being able to play sport and fill your evenings so I, th I think it's not just for me working, but I think for everyone, it's probably a really difficult time to not have that that way to release and find things to do to fill your time. Um, I'm trying to keep on top of training, trying to keep going with things. There's days where I really can't be bothered, but 
generally I am trying to do what I can do and you do feel better after doing it I think sometimes when you're sat at home or you've had a bad day you don't want to but once I get out and go for a run it it does feel better well, Leila, since that Achilles injury in the World Cup in July last year in Liverpool, you've done a great job getting back to fitness and we, we cannot wait to see you back on the court when the time is right. But do stay with us for now because we're going to hear more from one of your England teammates, Helen Housby, and uh, find out what life really is like for her in the Southern Hemisphere. Well, then, away from coronavirus, what's it like normally playing for you in Australia because it must be you know a, a dream come true really yeah it's uh, it's very surreal to say that I've been here for four years now um I didn't ever think that this was going to be my life and I'm very grateful that it is um because when I was growing up I don't think I really see netball as a viable career um because you know we didn't see it on the tv very much we didn't see it in newspapers um and we didn't see you know girls going up to collect awards and things like that so it's definitely changed a lot in the in the landscape within five years, I'd say. So, yeah, it's it's very surreal to be out here and to be playing pro netball. Um, but yeah, I definitely wouldn't change it. It's kind of nice to have the balance between Australia and England. I get to have a nice cold Christmas, but a nice hot summer when I'm out here. So I kind of get the best of both worlds, I think. You did a um, start of the decade versus end of the decade post on Instagram at the end of last year, like oh. so many people did. And yours, I've got to say, is definitely one of my favourite ones because start of the decade, there you are in like school uniform, you know, in your skirt. End of the decade, you're winning Commonwealth gold and the Suncorp title with the Swift. Um, how do you how do you process that last ten years? Oh God, yeah, that pleated skirt. I'm kind of regretting putting that on now. Um, yeah, it's been yeah, it's been a bit of a whirlwind. I'd say not even the last ten years, probably since. Uh, my first cap with England, which was 2014. Um, since then, it just seems to have gone 100 mile an hour super quick because, you know, I grew up in Cumbria in the country. Um, I was just playing my own sports um, and having a great time. And I didn't really know that much about the professional world. Um, and yeah, once I kind of got a taste for it, I just ran with it um, and haven't really looked back. And obviously the, the Com Games and the Sun Corp were the two pinnacles for me. Um, and yeah, it's... Uh, I don't know, I think if you'd asked that girl in the pleated skirt, <laughs> she definitely wouldn't have said that's what she'd end up doing, but I think she'd be pretty pleased. In terms of England then, when are we going to see you back in the red dress? Have you been speaking to Jess Thelby? I have, yeah. I've been speaking to Jess um, and, you know, I had some time off after the World Cup, as did a, a few of the girls, um, and it's definitely needed. It feels like it's been non-stop uh, for the last cycle, but I definitely want to be back in the England dress sooner rather than later and, you know, I think whenever the next time England plays, I'll be putting my hand up. So, yeah, I'm excited to, to get back playing for England. Um, and that's what I want to do. And, you know, that's a really important part of my career. So I needed a little break and it was nice to, you know, take that refresh, spend some time with friends and family around Christmas and come back out to Australia and start pre-season um, with the rest of the girls, which I usually don't do. Um, but, yeah, I'm raring to go uh, when it comes to England. That is really, really good to hear. Does it feel different when you put the red dress on now? As you know, you're an established member of the team. It, yeah, it does. And to be honest, you saying I'm a, an established member, that sounds ridiculous because I don't, I don't feel like one sometimes. It feels like I only just came into the team and I'm a rookie still. So, yeah, that, that does feel a bit different. Um, but I obviously, yeah, have played with the team for quite a while now and I do feel um, very confident with my role in the team and, and where I stand. And, yeah, I just absolutely adore it especially playing it at home um nothing beats it and you know the, the roses fans are pretty crazy so yeah i just love it um and i can't wait to do it again thank you from helen there Layla. how excited are you to be part of the england roses squad going forward again oh i'd love to be back in it all again um it, yeah, my time ended abruptly in July uh, and I think going to the Nations Cup stuff in January and being around it all in the atmosphere and it's just great. It's I love playing for England. I love wearing the red dress, but I also love where English netball is going and really enjoy being a part of it. So, yeah, I hope I can get back in um, and I'd love to represent again. Oh, well, we can't wait to see you in the red dress very soon. We have no doubt. Um, and keep up the tremendous work with what you're doing in hospital. Um, half netballer, half a doctor. <laughs> As I said at the start of this interview, absolute superstar from our perspective. Thanks for your time, Layla. Thank you so much, guys. Take care.
Great stuff. And now a very special message from one of the best players in the world. Hi everyone, Peace here. Hope you're all staying well and taking care of each other. We can't wait to get back on court soon. Take care and stay safe. We are very lucky to have with us now Manchester Thunder and the England Roses vice captain, Laura Malcolm. Laura, great to have you with us. It looks like on Instagram that you are the fittest you've ever been. You're working out every day, doing Zoom exercise classes with Leila Gusketh, who was our last guest. Uh, just tell our viewers about the last 12 months for you, because in 2019, you won the Super League with Manchester Thunder for the third time, and uh, then went on to vice captain the Roses in South Africa and at the beginning of this year in the Nations Cup. So it's been a bit of a whirlwind 12 months for you. Yeah, it's a bit more than a bit of a whirlwind. It's been crazy. Um, you know, I took some time away from England. I think I needed the time and space to kind of get my head back in the game. Um, and I come back with low expectations and just wanted to kind of get back into training and competing for a spot. Um, and it's just been a really great year and I've, I've really enjoyed myself. And it's just been amazing to be in that red dress. And obviously the vice captain role was just a, a little bonus on top of that. Well, a big bonus on top of that. So yeah, it's been amazing. And I think, um, Laura, we talk about the last 12 months. Do you think this is the best netball you've, you're playing? Um, I, I mean, I think if we talk about your career, it's been a bit of a roller coaster. You had that injection into the England squad. It probably didn't go the way you wanted to, but you've shown what a fighter you are. You've had incredible seasons at Thunder. You went to Stars, impressed there, came back to Thunder, learnt a different trade. Um, do you feel now is your sort of time to shine? Um, yeah, I think probably I had a period where um, I... I mean, I was always a very fit player and I definitely lost that fitness at one point. Um, so I had to learn how to be a bit smarter on court. So it probably did me um, some favours there. So um, since that's happened, I guess I've worked really hard to try and get my fitness back and I still am working on that. Um, and hopefully with that fitness and sharpness back and a little bit more smartness on court, um, it should help me really take my game to the next level. So that's the plan anyway. <laughs> <laughs> well, that fitness, that sharpness, we've seen a little taster of it on social media. And the netball community really has been keeping fit on uh, TikTok, on Twitter, on Instagram, on, on a variety of different platforms. Let's take a quick look at that right now. <laughs> Some of your great England teammates there. It was Deaf Awareness Week last week and Summer Artman was, was teaching everyone sign language, uh, which we picked a little bit up ourselves. We might not sign on the way out. However, what I do want from you, we've got, what, 30 seconds. I have a netball. If I was at home completely unfit, I am. What should I do? What should be the one thing that I should do to keep me fit? <laughs> Uh, well, you should put your netball down and start running. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> hang up, hang up on that. <laughs> I think there's so many great programs out there at the minute. You've got, obviously, the stuff that I'm putting out. Yaz is putting loads of stuff out. Sasha, everybody's putting stuff out there. So get yourself on Instagram, follow the England netball players, and you will have plenty to be doing to keep you fit and to keep your skills going. Uh, Laura, the ANZ Premiership is, is going to resume in June and uh, we're going to hear an announcement, hopefully at the end of next week, about when uh, the Super League will be back. How excited will you be to see your players? Because there's such a great community spirit amongst the all the Super League teams, um, in particular Manchester Thunder. 
Yeah, I can't wait. I cannot wait to be back with everybody. Um, I'm such a netball geek, it's pretty obvious, and I wear my heart on my sleeve, so um, there's no hiding it, but I miss the girls, I miss training, I miss competing, um, so I can't wait to be, be back. But we are staying connected, so uh, it's not all a loss there, um, but it's obviously not quite the same as just being on court together. Great Aww. stuff. Uh, Laura, brilliant to have you with yeah. us. Uh, kind words to you because you're a fantastic player. We loved watching you uh, be a vice captain in November and in January. And good luck going forwards. We'll see you very soon. Oh, thanks, guys. Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure. Great stuff. <laughs> great stuff. Ladies, it's been great catching up and the Netball family will be back when the time is right. Sky Sports. Feel it all.